Okay, class, welcome back to Forestry Knots How To. So, we just spent a little bit of time working with a very, very versatile and useful non binding safety of life style knot that puts a loop at the end, or a terminal loop, or an eye, as the technical term is, uh, at the end of a line or rope called the double figure eight knot. So, it's very commonly used to connect the anchoring for rock climbing or for tree climbing along the bite or the middle section of the line at the end through the eye that you create with the double figure eight through a harness attachment or a hard point uh, or a lashing point or a d-ring or something like that so we showed you how to tie the double figure eight after tying a single figure eight and feeding this line back through that harness loop back through the single figure eight to create the double figure eight sort of characteristic shape. There's another way to do this entirely different from tying the single figure eight and then feeding things through. Some folks prefer this method because it's a little bit easier to learn. Um, and then once you learn this way to do it, you can practice the other way uh, because the other way is more efficient in actual production forestry work than this. So this is just an alternative way to tie a double figure eight and we'll back it out to a single figure eight, lash it through our connecting point loop represented here by just a roll of electrical tape, and then uh, re-secure it as a double figure eight. So the way that you tie a double figure eight all at once is you double the line. So you create not a loop, but a 180 degree bend called a bite in the bite or middle section of the rope and then you tie a figure eight. So that looks like this. After doubling it, now we make that U shape and we pass the U shape above and in front of the line in the direction of the standing or anchored to something already tied off end. Okay, so you just make a D-shaped or a figure four shaped loop and wrap that under, below, behind the standing end in the direction of the standing end, not in the direction of the eye or the loop that you've just created. Then you take that which you've just passed underneath the other lines and feed it through the original eyelet or loop that you've first made. Gently trim or tighten or pull that complete. And that's directly the double figure eight. So you can see that characteristic figure eight shape. Here's the front loop or the first loop. Here's the top loop or the second loop that you create. And this is the eye or the loop that you would use to tie through your harness. Now, this starts when you tie a double figure eight in this configuration um, by doubling the line and then tying basically a single figure eight to get the double figure eight. This has the loop already looped. There's no way for you to tie that safely to a harness. And uh, one sort of important principle in safety is that the more features you attach to a safety system like a rope and pelvic harness system, the more points of failure you have. So you would not use typically something like a carabiner to connect the line to the harness through the carabiner. You want the line to go directly through the harness because if that carabiner fails, well, it's just another way for the system to potentially go wrong. We don't want that to happen for you when you're up in a tree doing urban tree care or rock climbing or high angle rescue or whatever the case may be as a forester or park ranger or whatever illustrious career you go on to. So instead of letting this loop stand, um, I'm going to practice it again a couple of times so you can see the doubled figure eight direct tying method instead of tying the single figure eight and feeding back through. Um, what we would do with this double figure eight is actually sort of the reverse of the other process. So we start with the double figure eight, then we pull the working end of the line 
through the double figure eight out as if we're untying the knot the hard way. So what we're going to have is after starting with a double figure eight here, we're going to end up with a single figure eight and the open eye. So I've just pulled one half of the double figure eight out of the double figure eight knot, and now it's just a simple single figure eight. Okay, so again, some folks like to do the double figure eight knot in this way because uh, for some it's just a little bit faster to go this way. I don't particularly think so, but whatever. So now that we've backed out our double figure eight knot to a single figure eight with a free working end, imagine this is the pair of tie off loops to your harness. So there's typically one loop for the belt. Uh, going around the top of your pelvic bone. And then there's a second loop that connects to the leg rings on each side, binds those together. And then we make our loop connect to both of those. So if either one of those loops on your harness fails or breaks or frays, then you still got the other loop. So everything has a redundancy. This is, again, a second way to make sure that there's no so-called single point of failure. So if either one of those loops in the pelvic harness fails, you're still okay. You still have some indication that something's wrong, but you're still looped in with the second loop. Okay, so we would take the double figure, double figure eight that we have dismantled into a single figure eight by pulling one half of that knot out along the working end, feed it through those harness loops, or D-ring or whatever attachment point you are working with in forestry. And then just like with the single figure eight method, you take that free end, you feed it back through the way that it started in reverse order. So it comes out of the single figure eight here. We go back through the same loop in the single figure eight in the opposite direction, coming from the backside in this case wrapping around the upper or second loop of the single figure eight, tucking down inside as the snake again follows its own body in reverse order, and then creating the second loop parallel to the original very first loop as a last step, and then just finishing the knot by tucking the free head of the snake, the working end, the white tipped end of this particular rope, through the upper or second loop, following in the direction that it came way back at the beginning of this knot toward the standing or fixed or attached to something already end of your line. I'll gently trim that and there's your double figure eight. So first loop, second loop, working eye for attaching to your safety harness at your pelvis, standing end of the system in this direction here, attached to the tree or top roping bolt in a rock face or belaying system or whatever. Got it? I'll do it a couple more times on camera so you can see how this goes. I'll try to go as slowly and cleanly as I can. So, we take the double figure eight and unthread half of the double figure eight to free up the working or loose end or open end of the line. Okay. I'm just gonna untie the whole thing so we can start again with this approach of starting with the double figure eight instead of the single figure eight. So now I've just got an open empty line and I double it so that when I tie this next single figure eight, it gives me a double figure eight. Make a 180 degree bend in the line. Fold it over the bite in the direction of the standing end. Wrap that down below behind this new eye that you've just made at that 180 degree bend. If 
but wrap it in the direction of the standing end or the fixed end, the attached end, and take what is going to become the eye of your double figure eight, right where you made the original 180 degree bend, and tuck that into the loop that you just made and pull it through, okay? So, here's that first loop that we made. Here's the second loop that we made. Here's the eye or loop that will attach to the harness. And the standing and working ends of the line are parallel to each other and the free end terminates with a stop knot. As you remember, an overhand knot is pretty common for this. So we tie an overhand knot around the standing end and then pull it through. You don't have to pull it particularly tight. This is just to make sure that the working end can't pull back through your double figure eight when you take a whipper and fall off the rock face and you are accelerating towards the center of the earth at 32 feet per second per second or 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, that's going to put a lot of tension on the line and that prevents this white free working end from pulling back through this double figure eight and making this eye not an eye and you not attached and you not breathing anymore. Okay? So, double figure eight with an overhand stop knot. Again, your harness goes here, line goes here. So once you've got your double figure eight, you would untie half of the double figure eight in the direction of the working end to liberate the working end completely. So we'll just pull that out as we go. And again, since the double figure eight is a non-binding hitch, this is all very easy. Even if you've put thousands of pounds or kilograms of pressure on this line, um, or tension, excuse me, on this line, this knot can't bind. It can't harden or tighten down so hard on itself like an overhand knot might that it's essentially impossible to untie, okay? So, now we've got a single figure eight. We thread it through our harness, two attachment points, or sometimes more, and then feed it back through the single figure eight that's left in reverse order. So back through the eye that we came out, around the standing end, through the middle, following itself, and then wrapping around your harness's eye, wrapping around in parallel to the original loop that you made, and then through the second loop in the direction of the standing or tied off end, way down at the center of the rope somewhere, okay? So that's the double figure eight. Initial loop that you made, second loop that you made, harness eye, that's the part that attaches to you, free working end and no longer free, so if we had a little bit more length in this line, it would tie that simple overhand stop knot, it takes about 10 seconds, not tighten it down too much, and then the line can't pull back through this, and the standing end attached to the far end, something safe and strong and so forth that you are repelling off of, or what have you. One more time. Take a moment to reset your line completely. And knots are very much a muscle memory kind of thing, so they'll Boil your noodle, it'll bake your brain until you sort of understand the knot just by practicing it over and over and over. Most all of these knots, you can get to a point fairly quickly where you can tie it literally with your eyes closed or uh, looking at something else. That can be an important skill when, for example, 
if you need to tie or untie a knot while you are on harness, uh, for some reason, let's say a branch breaks and you need to shift around your safety rig or something like that, or switch from one line to another on a multi-pitch climb, um, the ability to tie and untie these correctly and safely without uh, being able to see the knot necessarily is a very, very important safety and survival skill. So uh, take these videos and practice them all throughout summer camp uh, or the class that you're taking this video with and um, get to a point where you can know that you know that you know that you can tie this sort of a knot without even really looking at it. So again, last time, double figure eight. Start with an open, untied line, just the working end is all you need, and double it. Fold it in half, make a 180 degree turn with the snake so that the snake's head, the working end, is pointing in the direction of the standing or tied end, okay? Then, Make a figure four by wrapping the 180 degree turn that you first made over the bite or the middle section of the line in the direction of the standing end. Okay, it looks like this. It looks like a D shape or a figure four or a B, depending on how the video is flipped for you. Then take that original 180 degree bend, which will become our harness eyelet and wrap it below, behind, underneath the standing end line and the working end line in the direction of the standing and working ends. Then take that eyelet and pull it through the original loop that you've just made. And that's your double figure eight. Nice and quick and easy. Um, with a lot of practice, you can even tie this one-handed without looking at it. That's probably beyond what we need to do for this class, but that is not a bad life skill to have. Okay, so original loop, harness eyelet, second loop, working end, standing end, and Next step is, if you're using this for actual work, and not just to look impressive amongst your friends who worship knot tires, you untie one half of the double figure eight, again, to get it to a single figure eight status. So pull the snake by its tail so that the head goes backwards through the double figure eight and stop once you've got your harness eyelet untied, where your harness eyelet ceases to be, and it's just the working end of the line. Then you would feed this through one, two loops on your harness. Take up most of the slack so you have plenty of working line out past those harness loops, and then feed it back into what is now your single figure eight the way that it came. So the white head of the snake goes back through the way it just came out of the single figure eight to go through the harness loops, but in reverse order. So back through and then around, below, behind the standing end. through the middle, in the opposite direction it was coming before, around your harness eyelet to double up the original loop that you made, and then I'm flipping it over on the underside here, you feed the head or the working end of the snake through the second or top loop that you created. Okay, and gently trim or clean the knot by pulling it essentially tight-ish 
original loop, top loop or second loop, harness eyelet, harness loops itself, and then the working end finishes or terminates with an overhand knot. So let's do that part. Over, around, behind the standing end and itself to make this little loop right here. It's just a little granny knot or square knot and through that bend that you just made and you don't have to pull this down very tight because again the overhand knot is a binding knot and that's on purpose for this so that when you fall and put life-saving tension on your line this tightens down your overhand stop knot tightens down so that it won't let the free end go through the knot and you are good to go. If you tighten this down too much, it's a real hassle at the end of the day to open up your stop knot so that you can open up your double figure eight so you can get off harness so you can go home and take a nap. All right, so that is the double figure eight for life-saving, search and rescue, high angle rescue, rock climbing, urban tree care, um, pole and line work, what have you, with the overhand stop knot.